Good afternoon, everyone. It is Bernina Club, March 2022, and we're going to talk about simple beginner free motion quilting. It's a great way to get started free motion quilting is this little pattern right here. These little stippling loops, loop-de-loops, -loops, whatever you want to call it. It is a fun and easy pattern, and we're going to talk about how to get started doing it today. Free motion quilting is a lot of fun, and I don't want you to be afraid of it. I want you to enjoy the freedom of moving the fabric and having your machine stitch these wonderful patterns that you are actually drawing yourself. When you learn to quilt your own quilts, you are going to save quite a bit of money, which I know <laughs> is something we're all thinking about right now. Um, and of course, saving money means purchasing more fabric. It's a great way to express yourself artistically and do the entire process of your quilt yourself. You are going to impress your friends. Everybody's going to be just in awe that you can do this yourself, of course. So let's talk about supplies. For free motion quilting, you do need needles that are larger than your piecing needles. A lot of people use either size 7511 quilting needles or size 8012 sharps or universals to piece their quilts. I would highly recommend going with a size 9014 or even better a 116 when you are actually quilting. These needles are large enough that you are not going to have skip stitches as you quilt your quilts which is of course a huge pain and not a lot of fun. I see a lot of people who believe that their Bernina stitch regulator does not work and the problem is actually that they have picked a needle that is too small for the thickness of the quilt they are sewing. I recommend high quality thread. My personal favorite is Saracore by Mettler. This is a little bit of a controversial choice because it is 100% polyester, however it has low Lint. It does not break very often, if at all. It is kind of a matte. It's not shiny, so it doesn't distract from my fabric or my piecing. And I just really love the Bare Wood color number 114 for almost all of my quilts. It's this kind of yellowy color. It's a little yucky on the spool, honestly, but it is such a great neutral and it blends so well with the colors that I usually pick, which are very, I pick very bright, lots of colors in my quilts, you know, I'm sure you've seen a couple of them around the store at least. Um, anyway, quilting gloves, you need something on your fingers that have grip besides just, you know, your fingertips. This will really help you keep the tension down in your shoulders. It'll keep you from gripping your hands too tight. These things lead to muscle cramps and being uncomfortable. We don't want any of that. So definitely use quilting gloves. A free motion foot for your Bernina sewing machine. Um, if it is not a Bernina, you definitely need to be able to drop your feed dogs and have some kind of free motion foot. Bernina makes a wide variety of free motion feet that I'm going to go over in just a minute. And they're all great for different things. Solid colored fabric. I'm going to say it again. Solid colored fabric. You I like to use fat quarters for practice or scraps. Excuse me. If you are being very, very budget conscious, you can use old solid colored sheets even for this. Um, it will help you to actually see what you are doing because in this process it's better for us to see what we're doing and practice making better shapes that we can actually see as opposed to lying to ourselves and saying it's fine because we did it on a heavy floral. I totally did that um, on my first, I don't know, couple years and I really improved a lot when I switched to practice pieces using solid colored fabric so I could actually see what I was doing. Uh, batting. We need batting when we're practicing, just like when we're quilting for real. You can use cheaper batting than you put in your quilts normally. I would use something similar. So if you use cotton batting, I would, you know, if you want to step down to something like uh, 
excuse me, 80-20 cotton polyester. Great. And we want to be high contrast between our fabric and our thread. That way we're going to be able to see what we're doing. My examples here, I, I am stitching with red thread on white fabric. And of course, anything you can draw, you can quilt. So I highly suggest a sketchbook and a pencil or a tablet with a drawing program to get started. So while we're trying to pick a design that we're going to stitch out, we want to practice quite a bit. Um, and we can do that with a simple MS Paint on our tablet or any other program. There's a whole bunch for Mac, for iPad, with the pencil, just on a piece of paper with a Sharpie. We want to practice first. And our design today is going to be based on a figure eight, which we all kind of know from handwriting how to write an eight. And we are going to use this idea and just keep drawing those eights. And we're going to stretch them out to where they look kind of like this till we're comfortable drawing our eights. And then we're going to start kind of bending them around and making the middle part bigger and just doodle around like this. And again, we want to do the figure eight. We want our circles to go in different directions, our little loops. They, we don't want them all the same because if we do them the same, they end up kind of looking like this, which is not as good for meandering around a quilt. And we'll just keep practicing. And if we need to start over, we can always clear them out. Give that another go. Start stretching them. And you can practice just this as long as you need to. This is also a really great border to just say this is your border. I'm drawing pretty badly. I actually quilt better than I draw. Um, and we just kind of start it here and we just, you know, you can make your loops longer and make it skinnier, but it makes a really nice border. Like I said, you can do nice fat loops just whatever your your personal style is and you're not going to find your personal style until you you know give it a give it a try but we're gonna just one more time i'll show you we start with the figure eights just give it a give it a go you can even do them sideways and just get where you're comfortable with that motion And then we're going to start doing a bunch of kind of L's, cursive L's. We're going to make it longer. And then we're going to start going off the grid. And once you master this, the back and forth loop-de-loops, I said you can do this in any size. It looks great on any quilt. You can fill big areas and I do feel like this is a lot easier than the standard stipple and the reason is if I cross over a little bit on accident it doesn't totally draw your eye there does it it's not like oh man that's terrible that's the only place the thread crosses over itself because this is pretty much a, you know, looks, you know, it can look like just a, you know, kind of a, an all over texture. And you wouldn't think, oh, right here in the top, like I, I messed up, like right there. Oh no, like nobody's, nobody's actually going to notice. <laughs> so that's what I really like about this pattern. If you want to do a standard stipple, that's absolutely fine. I would start attempting that left to right, always, the direction you write in, and just kind of doodle. 
I will try to look ahead where I'm gonna go and I fill in an area move over come back kind of squiggle back and forth and I try to come up and kind of you can see I'm kind of echoing myself a little bit and then I'll kind of do a random shape in a direction a little arm and that gives it the appearance that it's more random than it actually is if I find myself in a corner sometimes I'll go off the quilt and come back whoa where am I oh there we are I come back onto the quilt from the side where you can't tell that I came off or on the quilt but here as you can see if I cross over on accident it's very noticeable and that's why I really suggest you try the loop-de-loop -loop stipple or whatever you want to call it and it can look really festive I you know if you try to make your loops a certain shape they can kind of look like Christmas lights or they can just look like little you know little little loops anyway it's just a fun pattern so first things first with free motion quilting we need to think about our presser feet and of course Bernina makes a lot of presser feet uh, we have more presser feet than anybody else in the industry and it's not because we're trying to force you to buy tons of things it's because each one is designed for a very specific job so let's talk about them first up in free motion foot land we have our original darning foot that's this guy right here it's got a cute little spring it's the number nine this is the one that comes with a lot of our q series machines as your basic presser foot it has a nice little circle so you're not going to catch on anything it's pretty easy to see where you're going and the foot itself is not very bulky which i do really like about this presser foot and again it is the darning foot this is nice and rounded uh, for um, to make sure you don't catch on anything of course um, and it does have the spring because our whoop, domestic sewing machines do not have hoppers so the presser foot itself doesn't move up and down um, like our Q series machines that's a big difference between a quilter specific free motion quilting machine and a domestic sewing machine next we do have our number 29 uh, the 29 uh, comes in both C which is what I'm holding here and regular the big difference is whether or not it has the sensor on it um, that little reflector just lets your machine know that you can do a nine millimeter wide zigzag with this foot um, if you have a narrower zigzag you won't be able to use it so um, that wide so we we do have one without the reflector um, and as you can see it is clear it has a nice big opening so again very easy to see where we're going it is nice quality uh, plastic so that you can um, see there's not a lot of distortion there's just a little bit of course because it's it is rounded um, and that's going to give us the best um, flow over the material as possible uh, so this is a great option as well then we have our um, one of our newer feet the number 74 um, the these feet with the big um, spring adjuster on the side we can adjust the height of like this the number 74 which has a nice big clear bowl on it this is for quilting over things with textures so if you have appliques you have a variety of textures in your project uh, different types of fabrics if you're doing crazy quilting um, this is a really great foot to use um, it can be like I said height adjusted uh, to make sure that your foot is in contact with the material but not squishing it so when I started quilting um, gosh back in probably 2007 so the year I graduated from college it um, was really common to use batting that was about as thin as a piece of flannel 
And now we're getting to where we use wool bat, which wool batting is a little poofy. It's not like super warm. It's actually quite comfortable uh, to sleep under um, and it's drapey. It just gives it a nice, nice texture. So, um, and like I said, you can raise and lower this depending on the loft of the batting you're using. So like I said, as trends change, you your presser foot will continue to work great for you with this height adjuster. The next one I've got is the stippling foot. Where did it go? Oh no, here it is. The next one here is the the stippling foot number 73 which is a lot like our number 24. The big difference between the 24 and the uh, 73 is the I don't have a 24 to compare but it is just like the number 9 here but open. So it's an open toe. The 73 does cost more but as you can see it is quite a bit thicker and um, the opening is actually larger. The 24 was designed for uh, doing embroidery and this one is designed for quilting. So that's what, that's the big difference. And of course we do have our height adjustment right here for your batting and it is half or a third open on that side. Um, those little marks are supposed to give you your center if you are needing to be precise with where you drop your needle. Then Da, 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 da. We have our ruler feet. Um, the nice thing about the Bernina ruler feet, um, they are a quarter inch tall. The little fence that you run your ruler along um, gives you a quarter inch from the needle every time. You can use any ruler company's rulers with these. Um, I do recommend that you get the quarter inch thick long arm rulers no matter what you're doing um, because it's just they just work better. Um, it's a lot harder to hop the fence, as it were, and sew through a, a ruler that is taller. Um, the 72 is the one that you will use on your home machines. Um, it's so funny calling the 880 a domestic machine, but here I am. This is the one you use for that one um, and any of the other uh, Berninas. We also have the 72S now, which has a slit in it to make it easier to, uh, to get your thread under the foot. Um, the 96 here, of course, um, does not have a spring, as you can see. It is made to use with the with our Q-Series machines. It is not made to use with our domestic machines. So if you have a Q-Series and a Bernina sewing machine and you just want to buy one foot, please buy this one. <laughs> Get a 72. Um, that way you just have the one foot and it works with both of your machines. Otherwise, if you buy the ruler work kit for a Q24, you will get a 96 and then you can keep it with your, your quilter specifically. And of course, we do have our Bernina stitch regulator, which comes with three different soles. Um, this works with machines that have the BSR option where we can plug it in. It needs power. This is a uh, sensor a motion sensor, not a color <laughs> or optical sensor, it is a motion sensor, um, and it will adjust your stitch length according to the speed that you are quilting at. So with this foot, you are going to have your machine keeping up with you instead of you keeping up with it. Now of course, any of these feet, if you are using it with a Q-series machine, um, you have two BSRs if you look in your needle plate area and they are upside down. You can see the little windows in your needle plate. Um, you have two of them on a Q-series machine because that gives you the option of sewing faster. Also, if you get off of one of the sensors, you still have one tracking. So you can quilt all the way to the corner of your quilt that way. Um, so anyway, we have, like I said, tons of options for doing free motion quilting. Um, and I, I recommend trying some out. And if you don't know which one you'd like, you can always come by the store and we can open one up and, uh, and let you give it a go. So to get started, 
I'm going to drop my needle and pull my bobbin thread up to the top. We do this so that our tails will all be on the top side, which makes it easier for us to bury our threads. Now, if I wanted to not see it, absolutely, in this case, I would not bury my thread because this is white fabric. Now, I will tell you, when I am practicing free motion quilting, I always use solid colored fabric. I do not distract myself with shades or shapes or batiks because I want to see what I'm doing when I am practicing. For my beginner pieces, I did quilt a lot of things that had little florals or like a lot of action so if it wasn't the best I didn't have to look at it too much but when I'm practicing so this is two fat quarters of just white uh, Kona cotton um, with some thin batting um, that way I can really see what's happening okay so to start I'm gonna drop my needle and then I'm going to pull my needle up and I'm going to use the, mach the fabric here and I'll scoot it over to get that tail up. If you notice, I did this instead of dropping my, f um, putting my hand under the needle, um, it can and will sew through your hand. So please don't do that if you can avoid it. So now that I have my thread pulled up, I'm ready to get started. I am going to make those lazy figure eights that we talked about. So this is a kind of a first thing to practice. And of course, it's a little, you know, you got to think about which direction you're going first. And just make your little figure eights. We're going to start stretching them out, and once you feel comfortable, you can start taking them in different directions. Because remember, we're going to make figure eight shapes, but they're going to go kind of all over the place. Right there, I did two that were going in the same direction. That's okay. Don't beat yourself up. Don't try to pull all this out. Just keep going. Everything will be fine. As I fill in this whole area, it'll even out and look nicer and nicer and nicer. I love this fill because I can do it larger and do basically edge to edge and it makes a very interesting stipple. Um, Whereas I don't have to worry so much about crossing over, uh, which is a thing that we try to avoid doing a stipple. If you don't know what a stipple is, it's this kind of puzzle piece shape. And the way I practice it, it's pretty good size. It can also be done, like I said, bigger or smaller. Um, but the idea is that we don't cross over at all, which for some people in the beginning is actually a little hard, which is why I strongly suggest you try the loop-de-loops. Because once you get that back and forth motion down for your figure eights, it becomes very easy to just sort of meander around your foot. And it can be bigger or smaller, depending on how big of a quilt you have.
and you can be closer together or farther apart and it really doesn't make as big of a difference. And of course any any kind of loop-de-loop -loop like this is going to prepare you to do things like pebbles, it's going to prepare you to do curls even, so it is a great practice. Uh, and of course a lot of people uh, pay quite a bit of money to have somebody else do this to their quilts. <laughs> So this is a question I get fairly often. It is, how do I vary my threads in my quilts? So I thought we'd go ahead and do that. So I'm going to get the thread off of the back side here, right here, and I'm going to bring it to the other side. One thing you can do always is cut your thread at an angle so that it goes through the eye of the needle easier. I usually use a smaller, a shorter needle. Not smaller, but shorter when I do this. And I'm going to put the, put it right through that hole that it, it made, the, the needle. So we're going to go to the front now. So now you can clearly see I have both threads right here. Now this is a little long, so I'm going to trim it. Still long enough to get those threads through the needle easily. You can use a little, um, I don't know what the new thread conditioner is called. It used to be Thread Heaven, um, but there's something else they make. And I am threading this up with both both threads. Ta-da! Okay, so I'm going to now put my needle in my fabric. And I'm going to make a pretty long stitch, actually, okay? And it can actually be longer than that. But I want to be between the layers and not go through the back side. And I'm going to pull up. I'm going to kind of cinch the quilt here. And I'm going to cut this thread real close to the fabric. And since I pulled it taut, oops, I dropped my needle. Okay. When I flatten this out, the thread should disappear between the layers. So now my knot is in the quilt. It's not on the back side or the front side. Um, and it is it is disappeared. And actually, with that red thread even, it disappeared pretty good. So that is how you s hand stitch in your tail. That's it today. And I just wanted to thank you for watching and give you a little preview of the Bernina 590 Crystal Edition. We got our first one in the other day and it has already gone home with a customer. So if you want one of these lovely machines, you really do need to get on the list. We are only getting a few more and I think I want one, honestly. They are so pretty. With the matching suitcases, this machine is big enough to do large projects, but small enough that you can take it on your retreats this summer, which we are all looking forward to getting back in the swing of things. Um, and we will here soon, don't worry. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today, and we will see you next time.